you mentioned earlier that this hasn't been the hardest part of your story or, or your life. Um, talk to me about that. What is, what's been harder than this? Uh, my, my late husband, um, Brett Winfield, he was a rower at Cal. We met there, um, got married shortly after, and he was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer, um, at age 35. Uh, I was 33 at the time, mm. at 2015, we were living overseas in Malaysia for his work. And, um, it was, it was so hard. One, to get the diagnosis, right? Stage four, there's a very, very low life expectancy, um, you basically have to, it's a miracle if you survive it. And I took it as, okay, we have to make another Olympic team. Like we're going to get our team in place, right? We're going to find our doctors. We're going to get the best medicine. We're going to research. We're going to change our diet. We're going to do all of these things right together. And he was as ambitious and as crazy as I was. So it was pretty easy for us to kind of ride that, that fight together. Um, but it was extremely intense and I don't wish it upon my, my worst enemy to watch mm. someone that you love for love and care for deeply go through the process of fighting cancer um, and ultimately passing away because, you know, the, the cancer itself, I believe, isn't necessarily the worst part. I think the worst part is the uncertainty and mm. the medicine. I mean, the medicine, watching his body deteriorate, I mean, he was this bigger than life, man, you know, six, five and huge personality and, um, you know, strong as an ox and never complained. Like you never would know how much pain he was in. And when he finally got to, it was like a year, almost, almost the two year mark. He had a two year window and they said at two years, that's the average when someone passes away from this. Mm. Um, he did 40 rounds of chemo. He did, um, you know, radiation to the liver, radiation to the brain. I mean, he did everything he could. It was insane. Right. And, um, the funny part to be, to, to bring a little comical relief into this is, uh, because I'm bald, and I would take him to all of his appointments. Everyone assumed I was the one that was dying. And yeah. he never lost his hair. He's a big old beard, you know, oh, wow. huge big guy. So I'd laugh and be like, it's him. <laughs> <laughs> it's this guy, not me. <laughs> it's this guy, right? And we approached it like that. We just constantly were laughing and appreciating each day together, knowing that we were on borrowed time, you know, yeah. and um, that's the, the gift of that process. But um, the hardest part for me is the PTSD from him dying, right? Mm. That, that the last 10 weeks of his life, you know, not being able to keep food down and seeing the things that I saw that no one else would see, right? Mm -hmm. And then watching his spirit slowly go and his body go and it just, it's heartbreaking, right? Yeah. And every September 30th, I know until December 22nd, it was the day he died, I'm going to relive that, right? Mm. And trying to figure out how to let that go and process and, um, you know, honor the time we had together versus just feeling the trauma of that has been a really big challenge for me.